Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta to part two of the Hathor material. As you can see, I'm still in Florida right now. So that's why the scene looks a little bit different. I do have the fan on me. So you might see my hair move a little bit. And if that's a problem for you, then maybe just listen to this recording. Um, my laptop is also on the bed. And so if you see it jumping or moving around, this is the only place I really have to record at the moment. So again, if the jumping around the laptop bothers you, maybe just listen for a moment. Speaking of listening, I've not had a chance to listen to Tom Kenyon's CDs yet in the back of this book and the front of the book. Still haven't done that yet. But uh, if you guys got this book and listened to the CDs that come with them, will you let me know down in the comment section below? Because again, that's still something I have yet to do. If you missed our part one in our introduction, that link will be down in the description box below, along with the playlist titled Understanding the Magdalene, where we're going through these this really, really interesting pieces of work, very eye-opening pieces of work. All right. So today we are starting on the first section. Which, which is messages from an ancient civilization. Who we are and why we have come. We are the half force. We come in love and with the sounding of a new dream reality for your earth. If you are ready to build a new world, we invite you to join us on a journey of the mind and heart. We are your elder brothers and sisters. We have been with you through a very long period of your evolution on this planet. We were with you eons in the past, even in the forgotten days before any trace of us was known in your present written history, which kind of gives me chill bumps because I was speaking to Kim about this the other day. We're going to be working on um, a series that has to do with like ancient technology and missing information. And this is all coming back from Atlantis. It, I think most people watching this understand that Atlantis is our true history and it wasn't that long ago. It only fell, fell maybe over a thousand years ago. Um, there's a lot of information out there that proves that a lot of the history we've been taught is just not true. And of course, you guys, most of you guys know that the fall of Atlantis was the flooding and that was the apocalypse. So we've already been through the apocalypse. Yay, that's done. We've already done that. Now we're at Gog and Magog. All right. Our own nature is energetic and interdimensional. We originally come from another universe by way of Sirius, which is a portal over your universe. And from Sirius, we eventually proceeded to your solar system in the etheric realms of Venus. In the past, we have specifically worked with and through the Hathor fertility goddess of Egypt. So Hathor is often associated with Isis because she was Isis's teacher. So Hathor came before Isis. And if you joined us for the Sophia Code, you know that Hathor was one of the activations. Again, that's in the playlist down in the description box below if you missed it, called Understanding the Magdalene. Although we've interacted with some of Earth's early cultures, we have an intergalactic civilization with outposts that span parts of your known universe and beyond. We are an ascended civilization, a group of beings existing in a specific vibratory field like you, we are part of the mystery, part of the love that folds and binds all of the universe together. We have grown in joy and through sorrow as you have. We are in terms of the vastness higher on the sp spiral of awareness and consciousness than you are. And we offer you what we have learned as friends, mentors, and fellow travelers on the path. You are poised at a momentous time in the history of consciousness on this planet. Something is occurring that has never occurred before, and it is a joy and a type of ecstasy for us to participate with you once again and come into your conscious awareness. For the last time we were together, consciously, was in ancient Egypt. And so again, ancient Egypt would have been Atlantis. And it's interesting. That's why we're seeing so much friction right now, because, you know, we know from the military back channel that 90% of truthers are infiltrators. They're bad. 90%. Look at all the tours going on right now, you guys. Look at all of them. 90% of truthers are bad. And that's why they're fighting back so hard. Because once we make that leap, that quantum leap, they won't be able to survive on this planet anymore. They just won't be able to survive here. So, all right. Egyptian history holds few clues to our existence, our motives, 
and our physical description. However, there are carvings left behind from the temples of the goddess, Hathor, that show our likeness. A photograph of one such carving appears on the cover of this book and may serve as a remembrance for some of you. In the pages that follow, we will attempt to bring you tools and understanding from our level of awareness. It is our hope and our desire that these will prove helpful to you. We want to be clear that we are not your saviors. Yep, because you can only save yourself. No one else can save you, only you. We are not messianic. We are your brothers and your sisters who dwell close to you. Yet we will not intrude into your choice making nor into your evolution, for that is your own free will. Boom. Consent, consent, consent. People often ask me who the bad truthers are. Well, I'll give you a clue. The ones who are doing things without people's consent, they're working for the three-letter agency of dark hats, black hats, bad guys. Good beings, beings of the light, would never pull tarot cards on someone without their permission. Never. Think, 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 because you have to be the one to make that choice, that free will choice to say no. And, you know, I hear, I hear a lot of people say, like, I'm not going to pick sides. Well, if you read the spiritual text, if you stay in the gray area of not picking a side, you're going negative. It's in the law of one. Cassiopeians speak about it. You have to stand up for what's right. If something is wrong, it's wrong. You can't just stay in the neutral. You have to have morals. Yeah. So just something to think about. We do, however, stand ready to assist you. We stand ready to assist you, not just through the techniques and the understanding that we will reveal in these pages, but we are ready to work with you immediately and individually for greater health and consciousness. Your choosing this book is a sign of willingness, and we are ready and available to you on many levels of consciousness. By offering our aid, however, we do not wish to interfere with your other spiritual helpers and cosmic relationships in any way. Even so, there's a great deal we would like to share. Let us begin with an understanding of you as energy. Yep. Energy is where we will begin our comments. Because upon the earth at this time, human consciousness is locked, locked and fixated on what you would call three-dimensional reality. The material world that you can touch and see with your physical senses. And yet with the spectrum of energies, the electromagnetic spectrum that your physicists have uncovered, you can only see less than 1% of what exists. We exist in the other 99% of the unperceived energies, as do the innumerable other kingdoms of this universe you have yet to identify. That makes sense. And that's why RH negatives like myself often are diagnosed with things like stigmatisms because our eyes are actually shaped different. The back of our eye, we have a diamond shape. So that is, allows us to see like other lights that other people can't see. That's why RH negatives often have more paranormal experiences because we can actually see more. Um, but the doctors want to put glasses on us, you know, and like dumb that down. Chapter two, the human as an energy system. As your elder brothers and sisters, we live in what you would term the fourth through the 12th dimension. And so our view, our perceptive of you is unique because we perceive you through an energy state that is different than yours. We are aware of you in terms of your interpenetrating fields of energy. This is perfect for today because since this is being released on Tuesday, November 1, that's the day we're starting our shadow work challenge. And that's what using things like exercise does is it allows you to feel that energy, right? That's what Reiki is. That's what all these things we're exploring are. So you know, the, um, it's not lost on me that this is actually being talked about on the first day of our 30 day challenge. The first of these fields, which is obvious to you is what you would turn your physical body with all its various chemical, biochemical, and electrical process extending through the trillions and trillions of cells that make up the space of your body. However, when we see your physical body, we see it mostly in terms of space. We see, we see it for example, your body as a galaxy of stars for each atom upon itself is like a solar system with a central sun at the nucleus and the planets are electrons spinning around. The hermetic alchemists coming out of, out of Egypt traditionally spoke of the law as above, so below, as within, so without. 
This means that the level of cosmos recapulate themselves in relation to each other. Thus, the solar system is a movement of planets around the sun. And in the atom, the electrons move around the central nucleus. Your solar system is mostly space. And so are you. It's right, because consciousness can move. That's why we talk about shape shifting and all that kind of stuff. Like that's because we're not solid. We think we are but we're not. It's all a hologram anyway. And those that understand this know how to change their shape. The rest of us don't know how to do that. So, <laughs> Indeed, there is a tremendous amount of space within your physical body and it is illusion that you are solid. I just said that. Yep. Even your science has uncovered that you are more than 99% space. When we sense your physical body, we see it as a, a spatial, not solid. Consequently, we do not sense your physical body in the same way as you do. We literally see you as a walking, moving galaxy of stars. So although your body seems physically solid to you, we view it quite differently from the standpoint of light and energy. Inner penetrating your physical body is a second field of energy that we call ka which could be in some people's understanding the pranic body. So prana is the word we use in um, yoga. That means life force. So it's the upward moving energy. Prana as uncovered by the yogis of ancient tradition is the essential life force of oxygen, but is not, not merely what you term oxygen. It is refined, subtle energy. Prana is amplified in large areas of vegetation and in large bodies of moving water. Prana is a life force, and this prana interpenetrates both your physical body and your pranic body or your ka. And if you remember, they spoke a lot about the ka in the Magdalene manuscript we just finished up. Your ka is the source of life force that moves through your physical body. The ka is sometimes called the spiritual twin or etheric double, since it is a duplicate of the physical body and its energetic field, but at a subtle state of energy. Those of you familiar with Egyptian alchemy will recognize the term ka, which is the energ energetic body that can temporarily survive the physical body after death. Your ghost, basically. Diagram of the ka. The ka is an energetic body that interpenetrates your physical body. Without prana moving through your physical body and amplifying the ka, you would not be able to live. That right? We talk a lot about the Shiva, the Shakti, uh, Purusha, and um, Prakriti. The body, let's see, so Purusha, the spirit, the Ka, can live without the body, but the body cannot live without the spirit or the Ka, if that makes sense. You need your Ka more than you need your organs, yeah? Without prana moving through your physical body and amplifying the Ka, you would not be able to live. It is the very force of life itself. Therefore, some of the techniques we will be sharing with you are actually techniques to stabilize the pranic flow within the galaxy that you call your physical body, which is essential for health and even for existence. Although you have other subtle bodies called the emotional, casual, and astral bodies, we will focus primarily on the cause since development of this body will give you a tremendous movement upward to the higher states of consciousness. Looking at diagram 1A and 1B, please note that all bipolar magnetic fields have simple and similar shapes. Biomagnetic magnetic fields include such diverse forms as bar magnets, apples, planets, including Earth, and human beings. So here you go. There's the two. You can pause it here for a moment if you want to get a better look at this. In diagram 1C, you will see a two-dimensional representation of the electromagnetic magnetic field surrounding the human body. Your body is a bipolar magnet with a central column, sometimes referred to as the central channel, the middle column, the pranic tube, or the antakarana by some ancient exoteric traditions, or we call it in yoga, shashumna. All biopolar magnetics, as your science has uncovered, emit three-dimensional fields that resemble a donut-like shape called the tube torus. So again, Shishumna is the channel of energy that runs up the spine. It runs through all the chakras. The mola, mola bandha holds it in at the base of the perineum. Most of you who have been on this channel for a while are very familiar with this now. If you're doing the yoga online intensive with me starting November 20th, we will talk a lot about Shishumna. 
that's the obelisk. So it's not, the obelisk is not Osiris's wiener. It's the spine. It's, it represents the column of the antenna of spine. The human magnetic field is shaped like the tube torus going right down to the middle of your magnetic field. The middle of your body is a channel of energy. This is the central column of the magnetic field that is emitted by your physical body. And it runs down the crown of your head. Yep to your perineum, which again was that mola bunda I was just speaking about. The perineum is literally right in your crotch, right? To the top of the head, all the way down your torso, that spinal column flow. The energy channel, the pranic tube, is a key feature for your ka and is a conduit for subtle energies that it can increase your life force. How you draw in or do not draw in life force determines how much energy is available to your organs and the bodily system. The Ka determines the clarity, the power, and the impact of your thought, and it also determines the quality of your emotions. If the Ka is disturbed, then other fields are disturbed. The physical body then operates on lesser energy. Thought is diminished, and emotions become more easily perturbed. So this, again, comes down to the chakra system, all the different energetic points of the body, stabilizing, working on them. You know, a lot of times people misunderstand spirituality. They think spirituality is like channeling and talking to ghosts. No, it's not. No, it's not. Spirituality is going into your body and working on your own spirit, not communicating with other spirits, working on your own spirit, which exists within your body in this life. As Mary Magdalene says, you have to descend into your body long before you could ever ascend. So if you haven't descended, if you haven't worked on yourself, if you're not exercising, if you're not working on these things, you're never going to ascend. It's just not going to happen. We would like to turn our attention to the central question. How do you bring more pranic energy into your ka? The key lies in your pranic tube. For example, your central column that extends down through the center of your body and its magnetic field. Depending upon the development of your consciousness, your pranic tube will vary in its length. In some instances, the pranic tube will stop at the crown at the top of the head. In other instances, it can extend well past the crown. The same is true for the endpoint of the perineum. Under certain conditions, the pranic tube can extend past the perineum and into the earth. If you touch your thumb and second finger to make a circle, your pranic tube will be about the size of that circle. I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's, it's your spinal column, guys. It's, it's your spinal column. We now wish to share three specific techniques to build your call, followed by some thoughts concerning things we recommend you increase in your life and things we recommend you decrease in your life. Understand that you have free choice in this, and we have no judgment about what you choose to do or not to do. From our perspective, if you wish to build your car, cough, there are things you must do and things you must avoid. It is that simple. So let us turn our attention to the techniques so that you can become aware of your car and your pranic tube. With this knowledge and awareness, you can begin to build the energy mastery necessary for health and higher consciousness. Self-mastery exercise one. In this first exercise, see diagram two. There are two phases. First, you breathe into your pranic tube, drawing testeral energy from the earth with one breath, and then you relax it and let it go with a sigh. With the second breath, you breathe in from above your head bringing celestial energy down into your body's pranic tube. And then again, you release the breath inside. Try this several times until you clearly sense a flow of subtle energy into your pranic tube. All you're doing in the first step is beginning to, to sense the flow of subtle energy into your pranic tube. It may be easier to accomplish this flow of prana if you play some type of relaxing music, since many people find the music supports their ability to relax, to turn inward, and thus allows them to facilitate this process. However, you can certainly do this exercise without music. It is especially powerful when done outdoors in the purity of nature. And I have a very different view of doing things outside, which we can talk about later. My views come from the Hatha Yoga Pradikapa. Um, about doing outside, which we'll cover that later. Your ka is crucial to the process of raising your vibration in the ascending spiral of consciousness, which we will discuss more thoroughly later on. The process of moving your entire being up the ascending spiral requires energy. It requires force, life force. And that life force is generated through your ka. The actual source of your life force come from all that is, and it emanates through all the part particles and energetic streams that move through the universe. 
The basic principle in regards to your ka and your life force is this, what you eat, what you drink, whom you interact with, and your thoughts and emotions you entertain, you entertain either build or diminish your ka, absolutely. And I am being told specifically, even when we started this, um, meat eaters. Now, I don't judge you if you meat eat or not, but I'm just, it's just, if, if you want to get more spiritual with yourself and have more clarity, you need to become a vegetarian because eating meat is just, that's the worst thing you can do. I will not go to a teacher or to a healer. I won't go to a teacher or a healer who's not working on themselves, first of all, but if they are meat eaters, I won't go to them because you can't channel. If you're a meat eater, you can't channel. You're not channeling. Um, our ancestors were not meat eaters. We are not. And I know people think that that's a cabal thing to not eat animals, which is the stupidest shit I've ever heard. So not harming another living being is part of the black hats. And how narcissistic and arrogant is it of us to think we're better than the animals? We're not. We're not. God, God put just as much design into them as he put into us. So, all right. Self-mastery exercise two. The next step in this self-mastery exercise is to draw prana into your pranic tube and then circulate it through your physical body. Step one, as you did before, draw prana up from the earth into your pranic tube as you inhale. Hold your breath for a moment and then exhale with a sigh, keeping the focus of your attention on your pranic tube. Okay, I'm actually really familiar with the pranayama exercise they're talking about. And I just want to tell you guys, if you do try this at home, be very careful. You really should get a teacher to help you with this. And in order to fully do this, you need to make sure you're pretty physically fit. Okay, because this is going to end up causing a lot um, of intense pressure on your nervous system. And so I would definitely find a teacher to help you with this stuff. Maybe you can play around with it a little bit. But if you want to seriously get into this pranayama stuff, you need to find a teacher for sure. Step two, next draw prana down from above your head into your pranic tube. Hold your breath for a moment while you focus on your pranic tube. Exhale and sigh as you shift your awareness to your entire physical body. The prana will then flow out of the pranic tube into your body by the law of attraction. Energy follows awareness. Work with this fa phase of exercise until you sense a clear flow of energy from your pranic tube out into your physical body. When you first begin the process, it may be very subtle sensation, and some areas of your body will be more sensi sensitized to the flow of prana than others, but eventually you will have the distinct physical sensation of prana moving out into your physical body. As your awareness becomes subtler, you may notice prana moving into your subtle body as well. Let the prana interpenetrate and extend outward from your actual physical body. This will allow you to increase the energy in your cost significantly. Self max, uh, mastery exercise three. The last phase of this exercise sen sensitizes you to the efforts of the emotionally qualified prana. As simple as it may be, the addition of this step has immense implications and will greatly increase your energy mastery. Step one, place your awareness in your heart chakra at the center of your chest. Recall a feeling of unconditional love and acceptance. Make sure you're actually feeling the state. Thinking about it will not do you must feel it. Step two, with awareness in your heart center and folding the, holding the feeling state of unconditional love and acceptance, inhale and draw prana up from the earth into your heart chakra. Hold your breath a moment as you focus on your heart chakra, still holding the feeling state of love and acceptance. When you exhale, move your awareness from your heart into your physical body and allow a now qualified prana to move out from your heart chakra into your entire body. Step three, return your awareness to the heart center and holding the feeling state of unconditional love and acceptance once again, inhale and draw prana down from the space above your head into your heart chakra. Hold your breath for a moment and focus on your heart chakra, still holding the feeling state of love and acceptance. When you exhale, Move your awareness from your heart into your physical body and allow the now qualified prana to move out from your heart chakra and into your physical body. We realize some readers may not have experienced true unconditional love or unconditional acceptance. If you are such a person, set aside part C of the exercise for now. Continue to work with the first two parts of the exercise and don't worry about qualifying the energy for now. 
By the time you finish our discuss discussions and exercises, you will find it much easier to access the feeling states of unconditional love and acceptance. We would now like to discuss ways to improve and strengthen your ka as well as those things that diminish it. If you wish to take the ascension journey, you will need to make your ka as strong as possible. There are very clear guidelines, and if you choose not to practice then, that is fine. There is no judgment on our part. It is all free will and free choice. But if you wish to enter the extension spiral through the different levels of your own being, you must strengthen your ka and also realize there are ways you can harm yourself. For example, if you have a bucket and you fill it with water from a well and your goal is to take it to the garden and put it into the roots of the plants, you don't punch holes in the bottom of the bucket and then try to carry the water back to the garden, do you? No, because by the time you get there, the water will be gone. It is wasted effort. It is the same thing with this. These are only the first steps. There are many more advanced steps, but these first steps will put you well on your, the road to building your life force. We want to be very clear that you have free will in this and your choices are your own responsibility. We're simply saying that from our experiences in this process, you have gone through this pro and we have gone through this process. There are things that will help or hinder your ability to ascend to the different levels of your being. The first thing we shall discuss has to do with the life force you express sexually. Sexual energy is actually a manifestation or an expression of your ka, the lower chakras, especially the sacral or sexual chakra. Our use of the word lower chakra denotes orientation, not value. In building your ka, you want to raise your sexual energy through the methods that will allow you to experience full sexual bliss and ecstasy without depleting your life force. The ancient techniques of raising this energy can be found in books on the Taoist yoga, tantric yoga, and kundalini yoga, so we won't go into those here. We will say that using our methods, which became the underpinnings of Egyptian alchemy, you literally raise the life force into your higher centers by bringing the life force into all of your body. If you allow your pranic life force to express itself solely as a release of sexual fluids and energy, then your prana is released to the lower chakra centers and is not elevated. As a result, your sexual energy will not have long-term positive effects upon your ka. If you express your sexuality too often without retaining and circulating your sexual energy so that it can circulate upward, you can actually deplete your ka. This, in turn, depletes the organs of your physical body, depletes the immune system, and creates other various decreases of energy within you as an energy system. We are not, however, saying to deny yourself sexual pleasure. There are methods that have been developed by Taoist sages and tantric yogis, which allow you to experience profound states of sexual bliss and ecstasy without depleting your cough. In fact, these practices strengthen your life force and elevate consciousness. We suggest you explore those methods. And if you want to go deeper into that, go back to the Magdala manuscript. Like, don't go be sleeping with people you don't know. Because you're sharing your karma too. Like make sure it's someone you trust. Another fact, a factor affecting your cause, the type of food that you eat and the type of fluids you drink. For life force comes to you from many areas. Yep. Generally speaking, humans have the tendency to get very agitated when someone tells them what they should or should not do in terms of dietary habits because people have great attachments to food. So we will give you a broad guideline here, leaving you to choose your path. Eating live foods will assist the process of building your ka, but you want to do this in balance. If you're not used to eating live foods, eating uncooked fruits and vegetable as well as sprouted grains, begin this change slowly. And this I'm going to have to put a halt on because that is really good for kappas, not for vatas. So Tom Kenyon does channel this stuff. So what I'm thinking is Tom Kenyon must be a kappa. And this is what he channeled for himself. So again, if you are like me, you are a vata, you do not need to be eating raw fruits and vegetables. That is the absolute worst thing you can do for your health. You need to be cooking, cooking um, or eating really deep rooted fruits and vegetables, potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, heavily cooked, heavily cooked. Add live foods to your diet in a way that feels comfortable. Adding too much live, live foods without proper preparation can lead to detoxifying crises. Or if you're a vata, it'll, your body will just hold on to it and won't let it go. 
as in all things, moderation is best. Listen carefully to your body, not to your personal personality whims. Your body will tell you what it what it needs and what's best. And again, that goes against the Ayurvedic system because what we crave is usually what we don't need because like attracts like. So if you're Vata, like I crave fruits and vegetables and life and juices, but that's the last thing I need. I need more cooked stuff, okay? So again, I think that Tom Kenyon must have channeled this for himself. I'm assuming he must be Kappa. Um, and that's why he might be confused that this is not for everyone. Okay. Not one diet is going to fix ev an apple a day does not keep the diet the doctor away for everyone. If you're a Vata like me and you eat a raw apple a day, you're going to be in the hospital soon. Okay. This may seem paradoxical, but when you reach a certain point in consciousness, you could eat anything without negative effects. Ultimately food has very little to do with spiritual evolution. Uh, nope. However, our advice is given to the average person who wishes to strengthen his or her cob. Most people will experience an increase in vitality if they start adding some live foods to their diet for coppas. Not Again, I'm going to express this. Uh, Tom Kenyon, if you're watching, contact me, buddy, because I, I, not according to ancient India. And this is the thing, and I don't know his background with yoga, but from what I picked up on the Mag Magdalene manuscript, it seems like he's just read a bunch of books on it. And hasn't actually had a consistent lineage teacher. And there's a huge difference between reading books on some, something and having a teacher. So, and I've spent years in India studying this stuff. And so, um, anyway, I'd love to talk to Tom. I think he's great. But there are some things where I'm a little bit like, er, that's, that's, not, that's, not what, that's not actually what they teach in India. That's not, not actually true. All right. As a general principle, life force is only increased by your life force. Your fast foods are dead. And those items you call convenience foods generally deplete your paw because they require so many digestive enzymes to process the dead food stuff. Again, not for, not for Vata's, not for, it is better for me as a Vata to eat some damn Doritos and Skittles from a gas station than it is, is to eat some grapes and apples. Okay. Watching what you eat and eating as purely and cleanly as possible will strengthen your cough. Pure water is also critical as is exercise. Yeah, that I agree with. In addition, be around nature as much as possible. Breathe fresh air that is unpolluted and allow yourself to be safely exposed to sunlight, especially through your eyes. This means wearing sunglasses as little as possible unless the sun is very bright and you really need to protect your eyes. These are just some simple suggestions to incorporate into your life should you wish. I used to be a huge Ray-Ban aviator sunglasses fan, but the minute I woke up to what sun sunglasses are actually doing to us, I stopped wearing them. I don't wear any sunscreen. I don't wear sunglasses. You need sunlight. Your eyes need the sunlight for sure. You will find your intuition increasing as you build your ka. This type of intuition is called gnosis. We speak about gnosis a lot on this channel. Gnosis means knowledge and it comes as a feeling of sudden knowing. Gnosis then as a refinement of your feeling nature, which naturally evolves as your ka is strengthened. Dallas refer to this type of subtle energy prana as chi and the pranic body as the chi body. The Hathors also refer to the Ka as the etheric body. The Hathors sometimes use the term all that is when they refer to the totality of all intelligence, matter, and energy in the cosmos. For them, the body is the divine presence. They call all that is, is the physical universe itself. As they view it, the numerous energetic connections between cosmic bodies are much like neurological connections in our brain. While the term all that is can be substituted for the word God goddess if you so choose, we will use the term all that is whenever the Hathors refer to divinity. The purpose for this is to avoid confusion with the word God due to the simple fact that different spiritual traditions use the word God to describe conflicting views in divinity.